Welcome to number four of my top ten favorite NES games. Super Mario Bros. 2. Released in 1988, published by Nintendo. Here's the story when Mario opened a door after climbing a long stair in his dream in another world. Okay. Keep pause if you want to read it. Okay, those kind of looks like there's glitches around some of the letters. There shouldn't be because this isn't this isn't an actual NES cartridge. This is on the Wii. So you start out with two lives. I usually pick Toad throughout the entire game. I want to turn it up a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to turn it back down a little bit so I can, so it's not too loud. But there's really not a lot to say about this game. I think everyone's played this game if you grew up in the old days. If not, pretty much a plat kind of a platformer game. And this was actually a game called Doki Doki Panic, but they changed it to be Super Mario Bros. 2. Talk more about it in some of my other Mario videos. See those hearts? I don't need the heart right now, but those three dots on the side of the screen re represent my health. When one of them's empty, I get a heart and it'll replenish the empty one. Collect enough cherries and you get a star. Invincibility star. Oh, I got hit. You get a heart whenever you kill a certain amount of enemies. See? Just replenished it. The thing I don't like about this game is that the enemies come back after you kill them. these coins and we'll see what they do at the end of the stage. Well that was close. See every time you get a mushroom in the in the, through these doors, you get an extra pellet. Not only good for this stage that you're playing in. When I get to world one, two, I'll be back with to two pellets. There's a shortcut you can take instead of climbing up all these vines. And I think I'll probably go ahead and show it after. Okay, so here's the top of the vine. I'm gonna go back down and show the shortcut going to require me going all the way back down. Jump over this way. Hold down long enough and you turn on white. You could do a super jump. up this bomb, you time it just right, you blow that thing up, go through this way, do the down thing again, hold it down for a while and jump, and there's a shortcut, and see if you go over here, that's the vine that came up earlier, this guy, I don't know if his name is Austro or Birdo, 
keeps everyone calls him Virto, but the credits show him as Ostro, so. He shoots eggs, just jump on the eggs, pick them up, and throw them at him. Hit him three times when you get his egg. All those coins I collected, each coin gives me a spin on this thing. Press A button to stop, and if you get three of a kind, you get some extra lives. Or if the first one's a cherry, and the other two are not cherries, you get an extra life. If the first two are cherries and the third one's not a cherry, you get two extra lives. If you match up three cherries, you get five extra lives. I plan on doing the full playthrough of this game, so I'm not going to be able to do it in one video. It's most likely going to take an hour and a half. An hour and a half to two hours to play this full game. There's Pidget. It came up and you can ride his magic carpet. Gadjo's those things are Bezos up there. Eventually it disappears. Those things, that bird there is called a tweeter. I forgot to introduce the some of the bad guys. Those black things are ninjis. I'm not going to get those coins there because there's another spot where you can get more of them. And you're only allowed to go into the red door and collect coins twice. After that, they're not coins. That's Phantom who chases you whenever you're holding the key. That's why when he comes around, you want to drop it. See, that's a shy guy right there. Sniff it. So if you fart, you might want to sniff it. Idiot. Now look at that fool. It takes a lot of time to find out where all the mushrooms are if you've never played the game before. One piece of advice I can give you, if you're playing this game for the first time and you want to know where everything is, if you've got a computer close by, go to nesmaps.com. You can actually go to Super Mario Bros. 2 find out where everything is. Pretty helpful. See, I collected all those coins, now I'm going to do it again. I've played this game so many times throughout my life that I could probably beat it, practically beat it with my eyes closed. Okay, not literally, but you know what I mean? I've played it so many times that most of the things I do in this game are just instinct. I'm going to collect that heart first. I'm going to collect some cherries to get a star. I'm going to show this cool thing I like to do. Try it again. Pretty sure it's six cherries to get a star. I'm not sure how many I'm at right now. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna wait for it to get up here. See, this way I can kill Birdo in one touch. Not that Birdo's hard to beat or anything, but it's just cool. 
to run though. I've done these Mario games. I already did an original upload of this video. I played Super Mario All-Stars, which is the 16-bit version of the game. The only difference between the Nintendo and Super Nintendo version is the graphics. And I guess there's a few minor differences, like this part right here. You see how the pictures flip, and the other one they actually roll. What looks more like a real slot machine. But this is the first high definition version I have because the last two videos rec were recorded on my the phone that I used to use. I used to use the camera on my phone to record most of my videos all the way up to Tetris Party. Another option Super Nintendo has that this game does that the NES version doesn't have. If I die, let's say I die in this stage here, I start I play a game with using Toad. The Super Nintendo version, you get to choose a different character after every time you die. See, the star right here is really kind of pointless because, check this out, it's like, every time you run, you miss every single one of those things. So see, I didn't, that star didn't help me at all. do. Get the super jump ready and do that. There's always a timer right there for some reason. Actually, they have warp areas in this game, but I'm not going to use them. I feel that when you use warp, like warp pipes and stuff in the Mario games, <coughs> you're missing out on a lot of fun boards. I don't know why I didn't bring that thing with me. I usually do for some reason. Just not thinking. I'm on my fourth cup of coffee too. I should be wide awake. And I should have instinctively carried that thing with me. You know, I think this out of the this game and the All Star version all the Super Mario games, I think this is the biggest difference as far as the graphics. I mean, look at the background in this game. It's just so bland, one color. In the Super Nintendo game, there's like all this cool background stuff. this game without dying, that'd be cool. I don't think I've ever done a full playthrough and beat it without dying at all. Usually whenever I play this game, I always do full playthroughs. Hey, fool. Here 
here at the end of each world, you have a boss scene, of course. First boss is Mouser. All I gotta do is catch his bombs that he throws and put them out there. Three times. That's the end of World One. I'm not sure how far. I'll probably get about halfway through the game, World Four, by the end of this video. I plan on playing, doing this video for an hour, close to it, and then we'll stop there and make a part two. I'm sure when I get to World 5 I'll die a few times, so I doubt it if I'll get through the full game without dying. up these coins because there aren't many in this level right here. Get quicksand here, if you stand on it, it starts sinking. You gotta jump to get out of it. There's some quicksand that moves really fast, you gotta be really have your thumb on the button. Oh, come here, fool. World 2, you're going to see a lot of these sand boards here where you're going to dig your way all the way to the bottom. Just got to avoid the shy guys. against Birdo or Oscar or whatever you want to call him. I think he's called Birdo. I think in the instruction book when his name is called Birdo. In the end credits, they probably screw up put Oscar. So I notice everyone calls him Birdo. And even NESMaps.com has him listed as Birdo. See, they give you a heart when you don't need it. That's just nasty. I only had three mushrooms, or one, three pellets at stage, so... I don't know if that stage only has one mushroom, <clears throat> or not. I'd have to check any as to remember for sure, but... Most levels do have two mushrooms, or are a few of them that don't. Very few that don't. By the way, there's three levels per world, in case you didn't notice. There's a level 2-2, two, two, then we got 2-3. After that, it goes to world 3. Flashlight. 
Can you go on the bottom to blow up your hand? The snakes here are called cobrats. That's pokey. Those are panzers, I believe. Those flowers shooting fire. And here's another one of these. Whoa, that was close. Alright, fool. The first Mario game I didn't really think was that fun, but, I mean, it was the, like the very first game most people played on the Nintendo. You gotta remember, back when Super Mario Bros. was made, there really weren't that many options of games to be played, so it was pretty advanced for its time. But, ever since then, the Mario games have so much more variety of stages, Okay, this time this guy breathes fire sometimes, so you gotta watch out for that. Sometimes he shoots eggs, sometimes he shoots fire. Didn't get any fire that time. As we go through the game, we'll be seeing more of them that shoot fire. You know, I never owned this game as a kid when I had the Nintendo. I had a friend, Faye, who used to bring it over to my house every time he'd sleep over and he'd play the full game. And my sister and I used to sit there and watch him beat it. I used to run it, though, every now and then. I did run the 16-bit version of Super Mario All-Stars, though, when I was later in life, when I was, like, a teenager. jump because these pizzos come down and swoop at the, wherever you're at so if you're in the air when one of them's coming you can get up there like that you just keep jumping until one swoops down in the right spot you can only do this twice Per level, which I think I already mentioned. And that's a collect coins. I'll show you what happens if you try it a third time. Just vegetables, so it happens in any level. You can only collect coins two twice in any level. After that it's all veggies. saying this time I gotta go down to the bottom and then come back up with the key. I'm gonna take a drink of my coffee. Just thought I'd mention that so nobody thought the game froze up or anything. Yeah, most
most of the games I play for the first time, I'm terrible at them. I'm just uncoordinated, I guess, but a lot of these games I've been playing so many times throughout the years, that's, one of, that's the only way I can put it on games. Oh! I should not have gotten that cherry. I should have waited. Star or a heart will appear in the wall where you can't touch it. areas are in this game and how to use them you can either go to well actually NES maps will only show you where they're at they don't necessarily explain how to use the warp pipes I don't think but I did a special video on my channel on how to do it so you can check that out basically you gotta find out where the pipe is or know where it's at Pick up the potion, go near the pipe, drop the potion, go inside the door, and when you're in the negative world, that's when you go down the pipe and you go to the, the warp air, whichever one it is. Oh, 
Okay, world three. And we got a lot of big waterfall back there. Okay, so here's where one of the warp pipes are. First I'll pick up the potion. That's a warp pipe right there. If I drop the potion, go through the door and down the pipe, I go to the warp world. The sixth one from the right. This takes you right back to the top. Kind of messes with your eyes all that water in the background falling. Just want to go right up the middle so you can catch that vine there. fall off the edge here in the negative world you still die so something you want to keep in mind you know what really doesn't make sense about this game this is supposed to be Mario's dream and yet you could pick what character to choose Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, so... Well, I guess I'm just gonna go... The other mushroom is right there on the edge. I didn't put the potion over far enough, so I guess we're not gonna get to see it. Now, I just have to forget about getting that fourth pellet there. Idiot. Die, fool. That's the first time I got shrunk. For some reason these Mario games can't seem to count higher than 10. Well, they can in the extra lives, but look at the coins. It goes... After number nine, it starts going into letters. It was the same with the first Super Mario game. Whenever you get more than nine lives, it was like... It had these weird symbols next to the numbers. Or maybe it was symbols and letters or something like that. It's much easier to get extra lives in this bonus chance here in the 16-bit version because since they spin instead of flash you can actually line them up and press the button at the right time and you usually hit cherries a large percent of the times so when I play the 16-bit version I usually have 99 extra lives before the end of World 3 See, now that's Ostro, which I think, and the credits are going to show him as Birdo.
Okay, that was just stupid. I might actually die here for the first time. So there's like a glitch in this game. It's like a design a designer glitch. Sometimes bad guys won't be where they're supposed to be. Which is not as a is not as a bad thing. Sometimes you catch on the edge of these cliffs, which can be helpful. I think this board's kind of cool how you run underneath everything that you're just on top of. See now, if you have the princess, she has the ability to float. So I'd be able to jump from here and float over to the left. She can hover for like a few seconds. And she drops. Luigi's special ability is that he can jump really high. Toad's special ability is that he's the strongest. He can pick these items up off the ground like really fast, whereas the other characters, it takes them a while. And Mario, he doesn't have any abilities. I guess he figures since he's the star, his name's the star of the game, he doesn't have to be anything special. I always pick up the wrong one. Super Mario Bros. came out in 1985, was released in the America, and then they made Super Mario Bros. 2, the Nintendo Corporation in Japan made Super Mario Bros. 2, and I guess they really didn't like it because it was too much like the first game. I actually did an upload of the game too on my, on my channel, which is called Super Mario Bros. 2 The Lost Levels. But nobody liked it, so instead of releasing it to the, America, to the United States of America, they put it on hold. They took another game, Doki Doki Panic, Panic, which came out in, I believe, 87, and they changed it into a Mario game, and that is the result of this game right here. So, I always wondered my whole life why this game was so much different than all the other Mario, Mario games. No Bowser in this game, no Koopas, no Goombas, no big green pipes like you see in the other ones. All the bad guys are different. I mean, some of the bad guys in this game do make a appearance in future games, like the bub bomb right there. We'll see him in Super Mario Bros. 3. Those birds there are called albatrosses. Ninjis, 
those are sparks right there, but those blue white jumping stars called ninjis, they make an appearance in Super Mario World in the very last stage. But they don't get credited, you don't see their names in the final credits. It's easiest just to jump right on top of these ninjas' heads to avoid getting hit by them. The red ones walk right off the edge, kind of like the green Koopas in Super, the original Super Mario Brothers. The red ones don't walk off the edge, and this one is opposite colors. Now you want to go in this door here, even though there's nothing to do right here. Go back that way. If I die on the top, and I continue, I'll start the last. I'll continue from the last door that I went through. I won't have to start all the way at the bottom again. Got my right cheek. Land right on your head. Okay, this one, you just want to time it perfectly. And I failed to do that. I'm going to be dying here. Okay, now I'm really going to be dying here. Okay, that's the first time, so. It's virtually impossible to get through this whole game without dying. At least it's impossible for me, because if I got that far in the game, and then died, I would be so mad. Usually I never have problems with this part. I don't have patience when it comes to playing video games as most of my true fans who watch most of my videos all know that. I usually don't get too mad often in doing most things. I'm my life, but when it comes to video games, I get mad real easy. And here's another mouser we have to face. This time we got a spark flying around. spark up. He's getting my way. What was that? I didn't even touch anything. Hit, this one you gotta hit four times. You know, I think I'm just going to sit here and keep jumping until that spark blows up. Eventually one of those bombs is going to have to kill him. Cool. Okay, that was a fail. What? I thought that was four hits right there. Man, I hate this midget. Can't throw.
And this time around, it's best to put the bombs in the back. He seems to spend more time back there. No coins. <coughs> World 4 1. So I think probably after 4 3, after I. Those white things are called flurries, and I hate those things. Of course, nobody likes flurries, huh? Snow flurries. So World 4 is kind of like the ice world here. You kind of slide on this stuff. So yeah, chances are probably dying in this board a few times too. See, that's just nasty. I should not be able to. Sp I shouldn't be able to spawn right there when you come out the door. Heart. Whoa. Mushroom will do too. I don't like World 4. The ice boards are always kind of challenging. Ah, fool. See, it's hard to pick them up, too. Just like landing on them are just kind of slippery. Oh, that was kind of close. Cool. Are you kidding me? I decided that after completing my hockey season and, well maybe not after completing my hockey season, but after doing all my top 10 favorite NES games, two more series of games I'm going to be working on. My top 10 favorite Super Nintendo games, and I'm going to do a special on LJN games. Nasty. So, I mean, any, how did I go right through the tail? Okay, see, that time I didn't. So, anyways, I think anybody who's grown up playing. Nintendo games noticed there is a series of games, LGN games. For those who don't, who are kind of confused, because actually back when I was a kid playing Nintendo, I didn't had no idea what LGN games were. And I just recently found out now after doing some research. Well, not now, but within the last couple of years. Anyway, there's a company called LGN who's published many. Nintendo games, and for some reason they always publish the worst games. The only thing I can, the only conclusion I can come up with is they're probably a real cheap publishing company that most developers probably only go to if they can't find any other publishers. 
I can't afford any good publishers, but some of the games like Back to the Future, Back to the Future Part 2 and 3, Karate Kid, Who Framed Red Rabbit, usually games that are made out of movies. By the way, if you touch that beam right there in the water, you get hit. Whoa! That is nasty. Now I gotta go all the way to the beginning of that board. Oh, see? That's what I was talking about. Oh, now the water's not going to come up, huh? Well, that didn't help much. Now, well, wait a minute. Cool. I didn't press any button, I don't know why he went flying like that. Maybe I jumped too high out of the screen where you can't do anything. That pipe right down there is another warp pipe. I believe that leads to World 6. I've only seen on World 3, I don't think I mentioned, but... Well, I did mention the pipe, but... I don't think I mentioned that it leads to World 5. Okay, anyways, I'm planning on doing an upload of all the LGN games, and just pretty much, I mean, I can't beat any of the LGN games I have, so I'm just going to show how terribly designed the games are. Okay, that was weird. If you do time that just right... You can leave that stage there with the music from the original Super Mario Bros. game that we hear inside there. It's kind of cool. Okay, this I don't like. Standing too close, I'm not going to... I'm not going to attempt to jump on him because I don't know if it's going to be an egg or a fireball. I'm going to wait until he's... You are nasty. Die, fool. Whoa. That's weird. What happens with the key sometimes, it lands on your head and you're kind of stuck there. You gotta try jumping out of the way and stuff. It's the first time it's happened with that egg thing. At least the first time I remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up World 4. And we're gonna end the video there. I'm going to do part two a little bit later. Oops. You know those mountains back there? These little white mountains? They remind me of them. Little Debbie snacks, I don't know what they're called, but they got all the white frosting on them. Just thought I'd point that out.
it's just weird the difference in graphics between this game and the 16-bit version. Oh. These things are not easy to walk on. I guess it's pretty much like walking a nice in real life. Some of the LGN games we're going to be seeing are pretty much, I think I actually mentioned all of them. Back of the Future games, Karate Kid, I mean the games have almost, some of the games have nothing to do with the movies at all. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, or Bill and Ted's Excellent video game adventure. One that was just terrible and there's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Okay, you want to pick the pink one up here? Jump on the red one, because the red one walks off the edge. Go ahead and jump off and once you get off this ledge here. Like this cherry there and you'll get the star, but I'm gonna wait. Star, but let's we'll stick around. There is a way to kill him. I seen somebody else do it. I think it's gonna be in a certain stage, which I've already beaten. I think it's like stage one or two. Anyway, you get that it's wherever I got that timer that stopped everything. First you have to get Fanto to come after you, then you have to get the timer. And I think when Fanto's frozen. Then you get the star and you can kill him. I'm not sure if he comes back. But... Okay, here's Fry Guy, which I used to have such a hard time beating this guy when I was younger. But, I'll show you what where I used to have a hard time beating them. I used to have a hard time with them. Okay, I'm at the... I'm going to be hitting one out, the one hour mark here. But this camera I can record over one hour. Previous camera used to stop at one hour, so... I want slightly over one hour here. But anyways, I used to have a hard time with all those flames trying to kill each one individually. But if you stack those things up straight where you've got a real tall one and you keep all those bad guys on one side of it they usually jump pretty much together where you can kill them all in one shot so anyways that was part one of Super Mario Bros. 2 my fourth favorite game the cool thing about having games on the Wii is I could just go to press the Wii menu button and I could shut the Wii off when I come back later I can continue where I left off so that's one advantage about Using the Wii, <clears throat> using the Wii for game, collecting games. 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed part one, and I'll see you in part two.